What's going on, Mobile Gamers? Today I'm going to show you how to run away from the cops and play PSP on your Odin 2. So let's jump in and up our gaming knowledge. Alright, gamers, so this is going to utilize an application that I own on the Google Play Store called PSP. P. 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 S. S. P. P. Now, this is an emulator for playing PSP. There is a regular version. And there's a paid version. Now, the paid version, I'm pretty sure it has a lot of extra features. And I've paid for it because it does have a few other features that aren't in the free version. So, you're going to type in PPSSPP Gold. Now, again, this is the one that we're going to be using just because uh, that version, like I said, does have extra features that the main one doesn't have. Now, after you install this... It's pretty straightforward to set everything up and because of our device being the Odin 2 we are going to be able to render a lot of games at 4x resolution some games actually render at eight times resolution and they look pretty good but most of the games 4x resolution look great on this little screen and this device now this section we're going to actually create a folder for all of our data this part is kind of up to you though. Now I like to have my own personal folder so that I can back up my game saves and everything. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to click OK. Now I have a folder called PSP already set up and I'm going to create a folder called PP S S P P just like so. And then this is where all of my game saves, all of my data, all my configurations and everything like that will save on the device. Now, when it comes to loading games, we're going to click on Browse. We're going to go to PSP folder, go to Games, and use this folder. Now, this is the folder that I have set up for my games. This isn't a guide to teach you how to get games. All of these games are set up in an ISO format, so I will show you my games here quickly inside of my actual um, games folder, which is my folder on my device. So, I'm going to scroll down to my Odin 2, and the reason why I'm using my max model for this is just for the sake of the video because you have to have a google account and my base model does not have the google account so yes a lot of these games are in an iso format and you have to extract most of these from a 7z format and how you do that is go to rar labs from the google play store and that is a free application so i'll show you that application here rar labs and it's this one right here that's the one that I use to extract any of my games out of a 7Z file easily and very simply. Now all these games are already extracted because I have all of my games saved. Now we're going to get up to the setup part of it. Now we're going to go to our settings which is on the right hand side. We're going to change our back end to OpenGL and the reason for OpenGL is because OpenGL is more accurate whereas Vulkan is more performance demanding. And I'm going to show you a game that actually has an issue with this at the startup, but then you can actually get into the game afterwards without any issues. That is going to be Crash Bandicoot. Rendering resolution, we're going to go with 1080p for the sake of this because our device can handle 1080p. Now, there is a little bug when you click on native resolution, click full screen, click full screen again, where the actual device itself decides that it doesn't want to be full screen and that's very very random to happen after you've already set all this up all this other information down here we're not going to change you can show your fps counter if you want to uh th this is all up to your preference and what you like to see now i like to set it up as full screen open gl 4x resolution because it looks great on a lot of the games as you saw in the beginning even grand theft auto looks great now, a lot of these other graphics, we can render duplicate frames on a 60 hertz, but it, it's not really necessary for a lot of these games, and I think they look great with this setup. Now, we're going to go to the controls on the left-hand side, go to control mapping, and we're going to set up our D-pad. So, our D-pad up, D-pad down, left, right, circle, X, square, triangle, so... My circle is my A, my X is my B, my B or my square is my Y, triangle is my X. Start and select, I think they're already set up. L is going to be L1, R is R1. Fast forward, I set to my M2 button on the back. Now my pause, which is just opening up the menu, is my M1 on the back. Save state, I've set it to my R2. 
and my load state is my L1 or L2. Now that's up to you. If you don't want to have those buttons set up or have any save states, you don't have to. I just like to show where those are and show you the extra buttons that you can actually set up. Screenshot, you can set that up if you want to. Maybe you want to have your L2 as a screenshot instead just to take a screenshot of the game. You can clear all your settings at any time. You can auto config at any time. I just like to set it up myself. It's all up to your preference. Audio, we don't really need to change anything on there. And all of our tools and if you have retro achievements, I guess that's a new feature that they added. I don't really bother with that because I don't use retro achievements. That is basically it in a nutshell. There's no BIOS needed. There's nothing else needed for this to actually work. We can jump into a game like Burnout, for example. Now you're going to see your on-screen buttons. You're going to click the back button, click settings, go to controls, go to on touch screen controls, which is a little checkbox down at the bottom there, and then they'll disappear. And they'll stay disappeared for all the games that you jump into, just like so. So these games, like I said, a lot of these PSP games, they render really, really well. Now, this is one of the games that I've noticed that actually renders really, really well if you want to upscale it to eight times. Some games like... Um, can't even think of the game right now. <laughs> I'm going to save this state for a second. Uh, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, you can't render 8K. It ends up uh, basically breaking the game look of it. So don't even try to bother with it unless you want to just see what I'm talking about. Now, I'm just going through the process just so that you guys can see what this game looks like. We're just going to go to a race. I'm going to go random. And then I'm going to show you the car. So the car, this is right now at just 4x but if we go to 8k we go back go back you'll see a significant difference of how smooth that looks and everything and this is what i was talking about when we select the the full screen option sometimes that full screen option if you change the actual auto rendering as you can see there it actually made it look smaller so just click on the full screen option again and then, like I said, it just it's cutting off that outside square there. So let's go back again, go to settings, change this to native, and then that'll actually natively set the screen within the actual device itself. Now again, I like it at 4x. I think 4x looks perfectly fine. If you've noticed any issues, that's you know all up to your eyes and everything. Some games have little lines through them, as you see at the top there. But that goes away. That's not something that's going to show when you're actually in the game. And if you want to switch back and forth between Vulkan and OpenGL, that's all up to you as well. Because our device, this Odin 2, renders a lot of these games very, very well. Let's go race. And like I said, that line just disappears while you're in the actual race. And this game renders fairly, fairly good. We're just rendering PSP on a device that's way more powerful than PSP. And the emulator itself, the developer has done a really good job with this one. Have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe as we reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers, hopefully, before Christmas.